So, are you ready to rubber jab? Commander Kenneth Logue has prepared his Sun Dog troops for a dog fight against the Quake. Both of my men's and women's squads are nothing short of inspired. We've added some very, very impressive weaponry to help us do battle with the minions of filth that dog does most of last season. But which team will fight first? Get some teeth! Ah! But how will the rest of the Quakes react to the return of the recently released Sean Atkinson? Without Atkinson, there is no Quakes. Crazy or not, I want him on my side. Meanwhile, Logue is plain disgusted. I'm still investigating whether or not Sean Atkinson was officially medically cleared and released from the sanitarium. And the man is a menace to society. It's the Logue-fueled Sundogs preparing to take a bite out of the Quakes Next on Roller Jam. From Orlando, Florida and Universal Studios here in Orlando, this is Roller Jam. Goodness, the jam is on, even for uh, this guy next to me. He's Lee Hawk Herman. I'm Rory Marcus. And thanks once again, everybody, for joining us tonight as the Sun Dogs take on the Quakes. And I want to talk about the Sun Dogs just for a moment because Kenneth Logue, the general manager of the league for a while, and now the coach of the Sun Dogs, finally has his ultimate dream, Lindsey Francis, as part of his team. But notice, as soon as he got Lindsey, he got rid of Posse Shaleen. Maybe he was afraid Posse would take his shirt off and Lindsey's gaze would go toward Posse instead of the great coach Logan. Well, somebody who will let him take his shirt off, ironically, is the Ack Attack because Posse Shaleen, the, the Shaleen machine, joins no other than Sean Atkinson and the California Quakes. Maybe Kenneth Logue's worst nightmare. And hey, how can we forget? I know I can't forget about the Bot Squad, Rory. Logue's in big trouble. The Bot Squad's always on Hawk's mind, and they're getting ready to skate onto the track. The Quakes and the Sun Dogs. And that pyrotechnics means that it's just about time to see the California Quakes. Stacy Blitch appears on the big screen before she ever appears on the track. But now here she comes, cartwheeling into her favorite arena, the bank track of the World Skating League. And a bouncy little dance for Stacy Blitch as she waves to her fans. The Bot Squad intact and ready to go for the Quakes. A little pirouette for Jamie Conamac. Well, the crowd has really gotten behind Jamie Conamac lately. She's becoming a favorite everywhere we go in the World Skating League. And Cindy Zimmerman blows a kiss to the crowd. The Quakes wondering right now about their leader, Sean Atkinson. The rest of the Quake women come out, and as you'll notice, they're all wearing Bod Squad outfits now. It's an entire team of Bod Squad members for the California Quake women. Posse Shaleen, speaking of the Bod Squad, the Shaleen machine is lean and ready to go. Posse blows a little kiss himself. It doesn't take much for Posse to take his shirt off. You just have to say hello. And immediately the shirt comes off. But the crowd enjoys it. And the white pony of Eric Slopey, a terrific jammer in the World Skating League as the Quakes are strong, but oh, what is this? Sean Atkinson. He's gonna kick his way out of there. It's a shame this guy has to come out here this way. Makes you wonder what was going on in the locker room before the game with Sean. He's here and he is ready to go. We've been hearing that Sean Atkinson's a lot better now and that's certainly a good sign when they bring you to work in a metal cage, isn't it? <laughs> well, Sean Atkinson, we know he's loco. He had a couple of locomotives pushing that cage up the ramp there, Rory. Two other things to notice, the entire Quakes women's squad is now wearing Bod Squad outfits, and of course, Posse did take his shirt off when he came on the track. 
Can the Sun Dogs match up with that? Let's find out. Boy, if you believe that music, you would think that uh, they could match up with just about anybody. And on the big screen, Professor Kenneth Logue, the coach of this team, he comes out and waves as though people are actually happy to see him. But the crowd reaction isn't much for Mr. Logue. He certainly is full of himself, though. There's no question about that. Steve. And he but has these two looking like Achille they're from Pleasantville. And Bill Barker yes, and Lindsey yeah. Francis. True, they are great skaters and they do look great on the track as well. And they do have some fans. Lord Scott Patterson from across the pond. And of course, Janet Abraham. I'll give one thing to Lowe. He's put together a pretty good team. A team that is talented, a team that skates well. Sure, they follow the rules, but they're getting their share of W's here in the World Skating League, and Kenneth Logue will be quick to point that out to anyone. Can you believe Kenneth Logue setting up these intros for his team? They come out, they salute him as though he's a, some sort of general. There was a picture of Logue I saw superimposed with Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that's going a little far even for him. This guy's a mess. Good job. Rusty McGovern's going to get a chance to maybe teach Sean Atkinson. These guys fought tooth and nail prior to the All-Star break, Rory. I think Logue, before the intro, says, all right, now time for couples to skate. Broadway Danny Wolf is with Logue. Let's find out. Yeah, Kenneth, some big changes here with your Sundog team. you got some new members. Actually, one has rejoined the team. Let us know who they are. It's an honor to introduce the two newest members of the Florida Sundogs. Our first skater comes to us from across the big pond, as they say, where he was an Olympic medalist, not only as a speed skater, but also as a bantamweight pugilist. He's a world-class equestrian and the preferred riding partner for Princess Anne, a member of the British royal family himself, and a knight of the British Empire, Scott Lord Patterson. Let me ask you, Scott. You, got, you have to get my name right straight away. Lord, Lord. Excuse me, Lord Patterson, you've got to be very happy to be skating with your buddy's team, Kenneth Logue III. Yeah, he's been a very good friend of the family for a long time, and it's a pleasure to be here skating for him. Bringing this next skater to the Sun Dogs, I think, is perhaps my crowning achievement as a coach. She is arguably the greatest female skater ever to grace the bank track, and clearly the perfect embodiment of the Kenneth Logue vision for Roller Jam. She's none other than the golden girl herself, Lindsay Francis. Lindsay, welcome back to the Florida Sun Dogs. Thank you. I just want to tell everyone thank you so much for the warm welcome, and I will say that I've always been a Sun Dog at heart. It's good to be home. All right, good luck to the Sun Dogs. Good luck, Kenneth. Back to you, Rory. All right, Danny, thanks a lot. Geez, so much sweetness and sugar. I'm just so happy for Mr. Logue, aren't you? <laughs> well, Lindsay Francis says she's always been a Sun Dog at heart. Well, she'll have her chance to play after saluting the man. Let's see if she can bring some of that golden girl attitude she brought with her from Texas and Stacy Blitz. She's got the new uh, the new uh, dreadlocks or the cornrows. Maybe we should be playing Bolero as her entrance song, Rory. I think we're the only television station in America that gives women's weights as part of the show. And here comes Jamie Conamack out on the first jam of the night for the California Quakes. Boy, she got out of that pack fast. Jamie Conamack, one of the original Bod Squad, and Stacy Blitz trying to join her from behind as Lindsey Francis tries to catch up as well. Boy, Logue's just is so pleased with himself these days. Just so happy to have Francis here and everybody conforming. Francis takes Conamack out, now gives Stacy Blitz a shot. See who'll get the best of this first duel of the night between these two. It won't be the last, that's for sure. And Jennifer Matthews is back there in the back of the pack now, and she's putting an elbow into Francis. But right now, Francis gets fired. It's a good jam for Logue's Sun Dogs. Lindsey Francis picks up four quick points. She's making him look like a genius, Rory. Four to nothing, Sun Dogs. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 4-0 Sun Dogs. Lindsey Francis is off to a hot start in this game. Jennifer Matthews picking herself up off the track. She's picked herself up all right and put a jammer's helmet on. So has Stacy Blitch in the back of the pack. And there are the rules of Roller Jam. Four, four jam periods. The women will be out here for periods one and three, the men two and four. Two jammers among the five skaters per team. They'll have on the black helmets. They're the only ones that can score points. And they do it when they lap 
opposing team members. Pretty simple, you'll easily pick it up as the game goes along, I'm sure. I'm sure Logue knows every rule inside and out. He's that type. Well, I think he's the owner. He has his own rules for haircuts, for attire, for being clean shaven. This guy is is demonic. He's a monarch. He's a dictator, Rory. He follows rules to the letter, Hawk, to the letter. Laura Heiser gets out there for his Sun Dogs, and Jennifer Matthews grabs the Jammers helmet for the Quakes. And these two now look to score some points in this game with the Sun Dogs having grabbed the early 4 0 lead. Ooh, going down. And one time you see him fall forward, you know it hurts a little bit. And that's what happened to Laura Heiser there. Jennifer Matthews now following Stacy Blitz through. And Blitz, a low block and then a high block. And Matthews skirts by on the top of the track. Amy Craig no longer a quake. And Matthews will pick up a lot of that scoring slack. And she's proving right now, yeah, I can do it. Give me that Jammers helmet, I'll get you the points. And Blitch wants a piece of Lindsey Francis. She's chasing her across the track. The jam ends and she didn't quite get her. But she sure did pave the way let's go, let's go, for let's Jenny go, let's Matthews. Go. We talked a lot about the Denise Lowe and Amy Craig combination for the ride. Well, Malibu let's Stacey go, with her go. new helmet, a little bit of new fringe let's on go. her uniform. Go, pack it up, pack it up. Laura Heiser, she really was kind of hidden with the BOD squad at last uh, before the All-Star break, Roy, but now Amy Craig's gone. She is really going to emerge. And to see the expression for some of the Sun Dogs, I don't know if anybody in the league is going to be able to handle this new BOD squad, a total unit now. 4-3. You know, there were times they had little schisms amongst uh, the Quake women when the BOD squad would get all the attention. Well, you might as well make them all BOD squad members. Then they could all get the attention. Can we say schism? I can say it. Stacy Blitch out there by herself again, and this is what she loves. She relishes this, the spotlight all on her, and you see that big smile come out. And Lindsey Francis sneaks to the back of the pack to try and set up a block. Or no, she's called a, a pull away. She's called a pull away. The Sun Dogs are going to try and run away from Stacy Blitch. So far, it's worked out all right. A whip from Cindy Zimmerman. And Blitch is catching now. With 13 seconds left on the jam, can she get him? Francis is in the back of the pack. So far, Stacy's not caught up. Loke said, go, go, get away from her. Four seconds, three, two, and she won't get him. Stacy Blitch didn't get a point. She tried to dive after Francis at the end and wound up on her face. Well, give it to Loke there, huh? That was a good play, good strategy. He has his team in outstanding condition right now. Let's go, let's go. It's not that Stacy's in bad shape, mind you. Well, one thing you can't argue about Kenneth Logue is he is going to be a tactician let's go, pack it to the letter. Let's go, pack it up. If he's turned that frown upside down, Kenneth, you just did a good job, my buddy. Pleasant looking man, isn't he? Four to three. The Sun Dogs still have the lead from that first jam of the night when Lindsey Francis got out there. Big Janet Abraham controlling things up there in front of the pack. And Lindsey Francis and Stacy Blitz both have jammer helmets on. Stacy's looks a little bit like a motorcycle helmet. But getting out there instead, Jennifer Matthews once again. She's emerging on this team, and now Blitz is catching. Francis and Matthews both go down, and Blitz goes right between them. And now Stacy Blitz once again with a chance to score. Oh, she slipped down as well. And she's looking at the track like it betrayed her. And Francis comes by and makes sure she stays down. I don't know if anybody's going to get any points on this jam either. Only 15 seconds in jam time left, and that didn't work out the way Blitch thought it would. Francis trying to catch up and score before that jam ends. You see the time there, five seconds. Can she get to Conomac? I don't know. Francis seems to be laboring a little bit, but she did slip by just at the end of the jam. But they don't give it to her. Time ran out. Wow, that's a questionable call by Sean Corbin, don't you think? Well, it's a questionable call, but I really have to take my hat off to Kenneth Logue. I hate to do it as the Golden Girl takes her hat off. But that last pull away really tired out Stacy Blish. Rory, you saw her dive at the end, and this is what it enabled. They didn't quite get any points to the Sun Dogs, but Kenneth Logue, we talked about it before. We may not like him, but he sure is a student and a teacher of the game. The men are coming up next, and when they get here, they've let Atkinson out of his cage. He's ready to go, and he'll go against Big Bill Barker and the Florida Sun Dogs. It's close, four to three, Sun Dogs lead it.
Welcome back. The crowd is really into this one as the Quakes and Sun Dogs are in a tight game after one period. The men about to skate onto the track. This is going to be interesting because the Quakes not only have the Ack Attack back, but they have the Shalene Machine. Who better to talk to them than Broadway Danny Wolf? Thanks, Rory, and I know Posse Shalene, newest member of the Quakes. You're happy you don't have to skate for Kenneth Logue anymore. I'm very glad I'm not with Sun Dogs anymore. Kenneth Logue is jerk. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Kenneth Logue had a talent, and he let it slip through his fingers. He got Rusty Montgomery. He scrapped metal, baby. And now, what are they going to do? They look all over the world for this skater from London, Lord of the Little People. As my mama would say, we kick ass, and then we kick some more ass. Oh. Well, he almost knocked Broadway Danny Wolf off the track. Well, he's going to kick some ass starting with... Uh, our compadre, you go take up for him, Rory. I'm going to do the key matchups. Bill Barker, Captain America. He's kind of the quiet type, unlike the guy he's going against, but he's Captain America. He has that signature move with the same name, and Sean Atkinson, they brought him in in a cage. He should be in a cage. They'll probably be taking him out in a cage. It's quite a picture of Atkinson, too. Looked like he was surprised to be here. Nice motherly advice, by the way, from Mrs. Atkinson. And here we go. Into the second period, the men on the track in a four to three game, the Sun Dogs lead it. And both teams get a couple of jammers out there. Whoa, now there's only one left, and guess who it is? Posse Shaleen, thanks to Eric Slopey. And there goes Posse Shaleen. Man, this guy is something else. He's been working on that California tan, too, I think. He's happy to be on this team. And Bill Barker slips back to the back of the pack. Another guy, Barker, who's just a model of what Logue looks for in a player. Atkinson spins Barker into Posse, and down he goes. Now, there goes Atkinson, ripping the pack apart, trying to make way for Shaleen. He's gotten two of them. Can he get by Montgomery and Sigmund Williams? Oh, now he can. When you let a man out of a cage, he's got some pent up anger and frustration. He just took it out, helping Shaleen score the points. The, Sh the Shaleen machine in the Ack attack sounds like a bad World War II movie pack start, pack starring my good pack buddy Curtis Fortnite. And it was a horror movie for Sigmund Williams and Rusty Montgomery. Sean Atkinson called Rusty Montgomery old dirt or something. Well, he showed him right there and he carried him out in a garbage bag. Scrap metal. He referred to Rusty Montgomery as former teammate and associate with the Quakes. No love lost there, I guess. Eight to four, the Quakes have now grabbed the lead. Micah Martin is out there for the uh, Sun Dogs, and he's being chased by Tom Smith. And here comes the speed skater, Sigmund Williams, from behind. So the Sun Dogs have two jammers out there. Oh, man, now there's only one left for either side. And it's Sigmund Williams. Smith and Micah Martin both went down hard. I just saw Lowe tell Sigmund Williams, go on, go get him. We'll see if he can do it. If anybody can catch the back of the pack, it's Sigmund. But once he gets back there, it's trouble. Shalene and Atkinson are there, and Atkinson puts an elbow into him. Barker slips back to the back of the pack to help out. Atkinson's doing a good job so far. Now he's in a tussle with his former teammate, Rusty Montgomery. Atkinson gets hip checked out of the play by Barker. And now Barker sends Smith into the rail. And Sigmund Williams gets through there and scores a bunch of them. They give him four. Lode likes it. It was a great tactical finish by the Sun Dogs, Rory, but I'll tell you what. If this kind of game continues with this type of Pack it up. beat them up, go. rack them up, smack them up, play it favors the Quakes because go. the Sun Dogs are not prepared for this type of physical punishment. The training regimen from that guy is skate clean, skate fast. They're not used to skate with a sledgehammer well, that Sean Atkinson brings. They could probably skate about 20 periods, though. Look, had such a rigorous training camp with this team. He has them ready to go. At any time, 8-8 eight to eight is the score right now. And for the California Quakes, Brian Krebs is out on the jam, and he's matched up there with Lord Patterson. And my sweet Lord, he gets the advantage on his first jam as a Sun Dog. Well, let's see what the Englishman can do against Atkinson, who probably couldn't point out England on a map, but knows what to do when this guy comes to the back of the pack. 
Atkinson rips one into his chest. Oh, and then gets his chest ripped by Barker. Patterson gets through there and scores some points. Captain America stormed Normandy, and Sean Atkinson was on the receiving end. How many other references can I get to World War II, Rory? But Sean Atkinson, a little bit occupied with the royalty. Hey, we don't have royalty in America. We got the captain. Hello, captain. Atkinson, for a minute, I think, thought to pass and was an easy touch and took his eye off of Barker, which you should never do on the track. 12 to 8, the Sun Dogs are back on top. Mostly because of this guy, Bill Barker. He says, Rory, why do you keep talking about Posse, huh? Built pretty good myself. We love Posse. What about Barker? No, no comment? No comment. All right. He plays for Logue. I don't like anybody who listens to that guy. There's a whip for Rusty Montgomery. It was almost too much for him. Montgomery's out there, and look who wants to chase him on the jam, his old buddy Atkinson. Oh, that's no way to treat an old friend, Sean. And Montgomery goes sliding into the infield. Meanwhile, Sigmund Williams is catching up to Atkinson's baby steps out there. Sigmund just kind of stalking from behind. I don't know if he has the power, though. Oh, look at that move. Shalene knocks down to Sigmund Williams and then jumps on top of him. That frees up Atkinson to score the points. And Sean is scoring the points. Right through the pack, he leaps through there, pulling the jam off, and what a play by the Quakes. Atkinson and Posse Shalene are going to be tough to deal with. The crowd is in the Quakes corner. Atkinson's happy. He's tied the game up at 13. It's halftime and we'll be right back. We are back as you see the uh, posters of the Ack attack with the score tied up here. 13-13 in the crowd loving the action in the close game between the Quakes and the Sun Dogs. Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rearman. I hope you're enjoying the action as well as we certainly did. One thing about Kenneth Lowe, he had his Sun Dogs ready to skate right from the opening whistle, and that especially includes the women. He's so proud to have Lindsey Francis on his team, and Lindsey Francis had a great first period of action here in this game. She got things going for the Sun Dogs and grabbed that Jammers helmet right off the start and was able to score some points early in this game. There you see her talking a little strategy with her teammates as Lindsey Francis scored the early points, put the Sun Dogs out to a four to nothing lead. And then the men took over. And absolutely, and I'll tell you what the problem was for the Sun Dogs and Kenneth Lowe is the Shalene machine. Posse Shalene came from these guys. He knows their weaknesses. He went right after him. He knows how they trade, knows how they prepare. I'll tell you what, Posse Shalene, the Shalene machine, showed the Captain America and the rest of the Sun Dogs how it's done, Rory. Well, he is something of a machine now that he's here with the Quakes. Let's find out more about Posse Shalene. Some skaters in the WSL have a hard time fitting in on new teams. But if you look and you skate like Posse Shalene, it's easy to see why no matter where he goes, he slides right in. Posse Shalene hated being one of Kenneth Logue's sun dogs, and in no time he chewed through the leash. Reborn as a quake, the former Chippendale is getting his groove back with the help of the Bod Squad and an unlikely new buddy, Sean Atkinson. I hated Posse on the sun dogs. He had no fight. Oh, yeah, then he joined the Quakes. He gets some teeth. Oh, daddy! But is the off-kilter Atkinson creating a monster? There seems to be reason for concern. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like it or not, the finish flash is adjusting all too well on the free-spirited Quakes. Posse, 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 posse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you're up here. No, no, that's yours. You get the feeling Posse Shalene kind of uh, thinks of his clothing as an unnecessary evil. But what a force he'll be here with the Quakes. Kenneth Logue is dealing with that tonight, among other things. And right now, he's with Broadway Danny Wolf. All right, it's time for the presentation of the check. $400,000 will be awarded now to the winning captain from the All-Star Challenge, the enforcers, Mark D'Amato and Kenneth Log III, I know you will do the presentation of the check. I know it behooves you to do it to Mark D'Amato. Well, the original intention of this ceremony was to present this check to Mr. D'Amato. However, 
If he or one of his minions does not present himself soon, I'm well... Hey, what is this? What is going on up? What is Big Nasty doing? Big Nasty? I mean, he's not even skating tonight. It's not me to hold these uh, motorcycles. Oh, my God. What is Big Nasty doing here? It's a nice Harley Davidson, but... Oh, no. You can see Mark D'Amato is now coming down the... Oh, look at D'Amato in the har on his Harley. Well, it's yellow, isn't it? An appropriate color for Mr. D'Amato. Cheryl, take offense to what you just said, but Mark D'Amato, if this is how he wants to come in to accept his check for $400,000, well, so be it. All right. Mark D'Amato, beautiful bikes, I've got to say. New Harley Davidsons for the big, nasty and Mark D'Amato. Mark, we see the check here from Kenneth Loeb III. Don't rip it out of his hands. There's a lot of great charities, though, would probably like some money from that. Absolutely. I know you saw it. Cigarettes on Wheels? Absolutely. I'm a big contributor to Cigarettes on Wheels. Well, let's talk about the sex and the violence. This season, you say there's going to be what? There's going to be. My main focus this season is sex and violence. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because I'm a genius, and I know what the people of America want to see. You know the guy who works in a factory all day and comes home to his fat, toothless wife? I know what he wants to see. And you know the fat, toothless wife who waits tables all day for minimum wage? I know what she wants to see. Sex and violence is alive in the WSL! Well, Kenneth Love the Third, I know you're one who's an opponent of sex and violence. What is your take on this? Daniel, we are... Daniel, we are... quite get a word in edgewise, did he, with Big Nasty revving that Harley Davidson up. We'll be back and find out more in just a minute. We'll take it up the track. We're back to Universal Studios in Orlando as Logue does a little cheerleading for his squad. Now that... Uh, Dennis Hopper, Jack Nicholson, and Peter Fonda are gone. We can play ball. Period number three, ready to go. I'm still trying to figure out what you meant by that. Easy rider, my friend. Oh, yeah. 13 to 13. The score is tied, so we've settled nothing so far. Other than low can't shout over the engine of a Harley. Jennifer Matthews and Jamie Conamac high-five each other, and they have a golden opportunity right now to give the Quakes the lead in this game. What's that uh, Jamie has around her shoulders here? Just a little uh, fur. A little fur, huh? Conamac and Matthews get there to Lindsey Francis. So far, Francis won't let him get by, but it's tough to take out two jammers at one time. Oh, especially with somebody cartwheeling in front of you and knocking you down to the track. Conamac and Matthews get the point, and Stacy Blitz wins this little battle. Well, the battle's not over. Actually, one battle's over, but the war's just beginning. It's not with Stacy celebrates. But watching woman as the Golden Girl grabs her from behind. This is what precipitated it. The Golden Girl and Malibu Stacy down in a heap. And look at this. That's not something that Logan condones. Lindsey Francis lost her temper. Of course, in Loeb's eyes, Lindsey can do no wrong. She could rob a bank and he'd say, well, that's understandable. That uh, looks like he's telling her not to fight. Just play the game. 15 to 13. The Sun Dogs now trailing the Quakes. And there goes Jamie Conamac again. Kathy Evangelos out after her for the Sun Dogs. And Stacy Blitch as well. I think Evangelo's outnumbered right here, and Blitz didn't take long to get rid of her. Good game so far, 15 to 13, the Quakes up by two. And now Conamac and Stacy Blitz, who've been bot squad members for a long time, talk over a little strategy. Janet Abraham's back to block. Oh, this won't be easy for these bot squatters to get by Janet. 
Abraham stopped him the first time through, and now a whip for Stacy oh, Blitz. Wow. Oh, look at that left leg kick up there in the air. Potomac tripped as she went into the infield. She did get a point, though, and I think called off the jam. And indeed, they give her just one. <laughs> Stacy Blitz calls it the rip curl, I'm told, Rory. She's Malibu Stacy. Little knee to the chest of Janet Abraham. The rip curl. First, she gets the whip from her friend, Jamie Connemack. Down goes Janet Abraham. It's not easy to send down the Abraham, where it takes two, but they got it done. Scored some points. These quakes are really clicking on all cylinders. Great move by Stacy Blitch, and it's 16 to 13. The Quakes now with a three-point lead in this one. The Sun Dogs trying to catch them from behind, and Lindsey Francis says, I guess it's up to me, huh? She grabs the Jammers helmet along with Laura Heiser, two pretty good skaters against another good one, Jennifer Matthews, who this time can't stay on those skates. So now Francis and Laura Heiser get a chance to jam for the Sun Dogs and try and get them even in this one. Boy, they, clean, they skate uh, clean as can be, don't they? You hardly ever see anything devious from these girls, unless that's considered devious. I think it was a good, clean move. Lindsey Francis knocks Stacy Blitch down. Just a little revenge. Laura Heiser gets the points and ties the game up at 16. Well, this is like a, a volley at Wimbledon between two great tennis players, Malibu Stacy Blitch and the golden girl, Lindsey Francis. They take a little time to pose for the camera, go. show some of those lops that they both have. Actually, for uh, Stacy Blitch, it's cornrows, and she looks like she was planted, speaking of corn, speaking of rows, by the Golden Girl. These guys are something to watch, aren't they, Rory? Oh, you're not kidding. And Lindsay gave her a little uh, sarcastic grin and pulled her hair there after winning the points on that jam. No, they were just, uh, you know, saying, how you doing, how you been? Think so? How's that new car, all that good stuff. I don't know about that. There goes Jamie Connemack again. Boy, she's been active this period, hasn't she? She's out there, and of course, who goes after her? Who else? Lindsey Francis. Logue's all excited over there in the infield. He's saying, come on, Lindsey. You're my girl. Show me something. And Lindsey gets by Connemack for a moment. But Jamie comes back and rips her one to the back of the head. Well, they're both such good skaters. Either one of them could get the points here or not get the points and bounce back next time and get them. Connemack and Francis continue their battle. And finally, Lindsey Francis rails Jamie Connemack. Jennifer Matthews back there to block. And Matthews doing a good job. Boy, she's working Francis over. She's setting Francis up. Oh, and Stacey wow. Blitz puts the icing on the cake. The back attack, Rory. It's called that because it hurts your oh. back. Oh, did you see that? That looked, like, uh, that looked like a body slam. That was some kind of a cartwheel or something right into Francis, who was already laying down. Well, Lindsey Francis started out the jam by dispensing of Jamie Connemack, who's never been confused with being a physical specimen. But she had her work cut out for two for Tuesday. There's the back attack that started the nightmare and lights out. But now watch this. Oh, we just missed it. She was just about to give her that slam with that backflip. Stacy's very pleased with herself, wouldn't you say? We're tied at 16. We'll be right back with the men's period. Welcome back to Orlando and a tie game at 16. The men are on the track. They'll decide it here in period number four as the jam girl lets us know. Number four coming up. This is the fourth and final period, and the men are on the track. And here we go with Rusty Montgomery grabbing the jammer's helmet with the Sun Dogs and Posse Shaleen the Machine getting out there with him. These two guys both carry a lot of muscle out there, and this time Shaleen gets knocked down. And you might want to, you have to think that Rusty Montgomery got a tongue lashing from Kenneth Logue at halftime, Rory. Posse Shaleen, the Shaleen machine owned that first half. Rusty Montgomery was nowhere to be seen, and that did not sit well with Kenneth Logue. You shouldn't have to fire Montgomery up against the Quakes. I mean, after all, he skated with them for so long. Was a teammate of Atkinson's. He should probably be the one guy that wants to win this game the most for the Sun Dogs. Posse didn't like it. He knocked down on that jam, and he's going to take it out on Rusty Montgomery. Look out for Atkinson. Oh, man. How many times did Montgomery set somebody else up for that? 
and this time he himself is the damaged party. And Sean Atkinson has opened up the whole treasure chest. First he starts with the skyscraper, compliments it with a nutcracker, goes after the general manager, half out for Posse Shalhoun, who's starting to take clothes off, Rory. That's always a bad sign for the other team. That means he means business. And Logue had some words for Posse. He doesn't like all of that. And he especially doesn't like to see his skater down on the ground, and that's why he's yelling at Sean Corbin as well. Game is still tied up at 16. You see him helping Rusty Montgomery up. I'll say one thing about Logue. He keeps coaching. He keeps trying to win this thing. But Atkinson might have something to say about that. And I think Rusty Montgomery is really injured, Rory. He's over here on the bench talking to somebody in our training staff. He really looks shook up after that hit. Who wouldn't be? You get that skate right into the groin. That's going to shake you up a little bit. So will that move by Sean Atkinson. He just took out two Sun Dogs. And that gets Eric Slopey on his white pony out there on this jam all by himself. Slopey's trying to untie this game. And now he's done it because he knocks Sigmund Williams down to the track. Sigmund picks himself up as Slopey continues on and runs into Bill Barker, who's teamed up with oh! Ryan Gallagher back there, and Atkinson's done it again. Wow, Atkinson's having quite a fourth and final period. He continues to knock Sundogs down while the White Pony gets the points, Slopey. Atkinson belongs back in the cage. Well, they're going to put him back in after the game, I think, and just take him back to wherever he habitates. We'll be right back. The Quakes have grabbed the lead at 18 to 16. Wow, take a look at that. That's unbelievable. Well, he was slow to get up. I think his pride was as injured as much as his body. Although, we saw the Nutcracker. You know what? I think his body was pretty beat up after that one, too. Yeah, he needed a breather, that's for sure. But you know what else? These guys are as tough as can be, and so is Rusty Montgomery. He's out there again. He's back on the track and ready to go. Oh, look at that shot by Bill Parker. Bill Parker knocking Brian Cripps almost out of town. And that leaves the Sun Dogs with the great one. At least in his mind, Lord Patterson out on the jam. He came over from England. Logues are recruiting, goes far and wide. He thinks he has a real gem here. We'll see. Patterson comes up to the back of the pack and he says, man, I never saw a guy like this over there. He should have went over to Finland. That's where Shaleen hangs out. I don't, oh, know. No. I don't know where Atkinson hangs out, but wherever it is, Patterson's getting a taste of it right now. Well, they're not done with him. Bossy Shaleen, the Shaleen machine, is tearing his clothes off. He says, I'm going to take my clothes off for the gym. Next gym, I'm going to rip somebody else's off. You know why he's doing it? Because he knows Log hates it. Oh, no, he's got a hockey stick, Rory. That's it. Where in the world did Posse Shaleen get a hockey stick to bring out here? I don't know. Where did Tim Washington get a Harley? It's a lot easier to stick a hockey stick in here than a Harley. Oh, the garbage can. What the heck? Where's the kitchen oh, sink? My goodness. Atkinson just put that no. thing down. Don't do it. Sean Atkinson's gone mad. Logue has been back attacked. The trash can is dented. They're going to take Atkinson out. Security's going to do it. He's lost. Oh, he's done. Cages for everyone. And a gurney. You are gone, Atkinson. Get out of this lane. Everything was fine and dandy until the... I don't even know what Atkinson calls that. It's not a Superman or a skyscraper. It just looked like a, a fish hook. And Lord Patterson, welcome to the United States. Then we get the former Edmonton Oiler, Posse Shalene, bringing out the artillery. Then we get a garbage can. We've had Harleys. I don't know, Rory. Am, am I in the broadcast booth or at a hardware store? Who's left? Well, sometimes Atkinson's his own worst enemy because he's gone from this game now with the game on the line. Who's left? That guy there, Lord Patterson, with his undershirt on. I think Lord bought that for him. Look at that thing. And now Lord Patterson knocks, slips out of the hip check by 
Slopey, and he has a chance to win this game. Well, and, and Atkins has been ejected. Posse should leave in the penalty box. It's five on three, Rory. The Sun Dogs have a wonderful opportunity with Lord Patterson out there to win this game. And remember, if he does score against all three of the Quakes that are left, he'll get credit for Atkinson and for Shaleen. But right now, they're down by one. And Chad Vaughn, of all people, goes back to try and keep the Quakes in the lead and win this game. But he gets knocked down by Barker. Lord Patterson slips by. And Barker says, come on, we got to get another one before the jam's over. Eight seconds to go. He slips by and gets another one. And the Sun Dogs are going to win this game. Patterson successful in his debut in the States on Roller Jam. He gets congratulations from Brian Gallagher. Logue is celebrating. The crowd kind of mixed. I think some of them like Atkinson. One thing about Logue, he's always happy when he wins the game. And he won this one with his new addition, Scott Patterson getting the winning points. Patterson right now is uh, heading over towards Broadway Danny Wolf's location. If he can catch his breath, he'll get up and uh, do an interview with Broadway. Kenneth Logue's over there attending to him. There's Patterson, there's Logue. Let's see what uh, Broadway can find out. All right, sub game victory for the Sundogs. It's amazing you guys won. I mean, you were back attacked and, I mean, you had your clothes ripped off. You know, it's just a, it's just a sign of things that have, that have gone wrong. You can't play by bad rules. No bad rules allowed in this game. Well, the Lord says no bad rules. Kenneth Lowe, congratulations. How are you feeling real quick? Well, I feel fine, fit as a fiddle, Daniel. I am vowing, as God is my witness, that that is the last we will see of Sean Atkinson in the World Skating League. But we'll see if that's the last of Sean Atkinson. Lowe promises it back to you, Rory. I doubt very much he can keep his word on that one, but tonight, he has kept his word and they've won the game. 19 to 18 Sun Dogs. Thanks very much for being with us. We'll see you next time on Roller Jam.